I'm Eddie Berg and I uh, am the Director of Partnerships at the BFI um, and I've worked at the BFI for seven years. I did the redevelopment of the venue on the South Bank but before that I uh, ran an organisation called FACT in Liverpool which is a centre for film, art and media and um, and FACT as you, it was the first purpose-built arts building in the city for over 60 years. And a lot of the ideas that went into FACT were actually in many ways informed by my early experiences of going to cinema and actually later on going to, to, to different kinds of cinema experiences um, outside of the UK. But my earliest cinema experiences were really significant I think like they are for a lot of people because it's it's about something that you experience at the same time with a lot of other people uh, and there is something quite magical about that you know the same way there is with live music and um, I grew up in uh, Parkfield Road which is uh, runs parallel to Lark Lane so there, are two, there were two cinemas very close to me. One was the Mayfair in Egbeth Road, and the other was the uh, Gourmont in the Dingle. Uh, now, the, the, it's interesting that the Mayfair was, uh, I remember, was, uh, was a, you know, what we think of today as a kind of very mainstream sort of fair. Uh, whereas the, um, uh, the Gourmont, because the Gourmont was a French chain, Occasionally you get a kind of really interesting film because for some reason there'd be French distributors would have picked it up and it would play to a uh, to UK audience uh, and wouldn't play you know kind of anywhere else except for Gourmonts. One of my one of my earliest experiences was um, in the Mayfair was uh, of being kind of properly terrorised in the cinema for the first time, going to watch uh, Darby O'Gill and the Little People, and um, which is stars Patrick McGowan. And uh, the, the reason, what, partly why this was kind of terrifying is that uh, around the family we had uh, someone we, we thought of as, uh, as an aunt, although she wasn't really an aunt, I and mean, she lived in the same block of flats that we lived in. And she was deeply superstitious, and she would often go on about banshees and uh, which you know when I was like five or six this was just any story about a banshee was completely terrifying so when I went to see Darby O'Gill and the Little People there's a sequence in it where a banshee appears and so all these stories are kind of been in uh, that I've heard before were given a very particular kind of form for me by watching this film and it completely and utterly terrified me so that the next time that my aunt, as it were, told me a story about banshees, I had these images from Darby O'Gill in my head all the time. And it took me years to shake it off. It actually, it was kind of, it, it really, it, it was like one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. But when, when I kind of, um, uh, when I sort of uh, started looking at, um, uh, you know, making different choices about the kind of films that I go to see. You know, so obviously as a kid, most of the time you get taken along by your mum or your dad or whatever, uh, and then later on you kind of go with groups of friends and you start watching different kinds of films. Then obviously in the city, the the I, I was uh, I was like everybody else. This is a city in which you know most of the films that you could see were kind of pretty much mainstream films, and of course, like everyone else, I would go and see the big blockbuster films and so on at the Odeon or whatever. But when I got to about uh, seven, 17 or 18, um, you know, my, my kind of, the, the, the Liverpool connection here in terms of opening up a world of film for me was that there was this programme on BBC Two called Movie Drone. And, um, and the whole thing about Movie Drone was it was it wasn't just the kind of film that you couldn't sort of see any other way, especially if you're in Liverpool, you couldn't see it in, in cinemas. Um, it, was, it, it was kind of contextualised, so there'd be a kind of story about that film and how it kind of related to other films and, you know, other sort of 
uh, other aspects of film history. And this was presented by someone called Alex Cox, who, uh, who uh, and when Alex Cox started doing this, I hadn't seen a film that he'd made called Repo Man. And um, it was, at that sort of time, I think there is, um, it was, it was uh, a really important way to uh, that, that through TV to open up different worlds of film. And here was someone with a Scouse, ex Scouse accent who I'd never met before but was a film director who was kind of helping me to do that. And through that, I went to the, uh, the Merseyside Film Institute in the Blue Coat. And I went, you know, started going on a regular basis because there you could start to see, you could see films that, that just weren't shown anywhere else. There. And there was something kind of quite sort of, um, uh, sort of it, it's in, a, in a sort of funny, kind of quite magical way because it was sh they were shown on 16 millimeter film. And the films would often stop, the projector would often stop, break down. So there was, there was you know, it was a kind of live experience with, with lots of flaws. But there was something really interesting about it. And then I started up an organisation called Moviola and that organisation started to show, we started to show film and we started to do, we started to work with this new area of uh, video installation and started to do some of those things with some of the galleries in Liverpool and set up a biennial festival called Video Positive. But Moviola started in a little office in the Unity Theatre, just a single office, tiny space like nine square meter space. And then, when we started to take off, I started to be three or four people instead of just me, we had to move office. And we moved into the offices that were formerly occupied by the Merseyside Film Institute. And then fact became out of that. Fact grew in the space that became the Merseyside Film Institute. And my office, the, what became my office. When, when I went to Merseyside Film Institute, that was, believe it or not, a Vietnamese restaurant. The term restaurant was actually applied to it, even though it was one guy serving up Vietnamese food in a tiny space. It was, he kind of described it as a restaurant. So, then fact, of course, grew, and over time, uh, the building project came off, and and here we are you know, in 2013 with uh, you know buildings being open for 10 years and it's been very successful it's brought a whole new wave of of films to Liverpool that couldn't that you know you can't see anywhere else in the city uh, and I'm very proud that that's what has been uh, we've been able to make happen over that time obviously I haven't been part of the organization directly for eight years but it's still thriving and there is uh, and I think it's really satisfying to, for me to think about my own kind of personal journey from going as you know five six year old uh, with my sister uh, with my mum and dad to watch those films uh, at, at the Mayfair and the Gourmont and uh, all the time that desire to kind of create I suppose a sort of a world in Liverpool, in my own city, in which people could engage with the widest range of film, and here we are. It's you know, it's it's kind of it's it's come about, and I'm uh, uh, and I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm.